Charlotte's a brave little <laughs> hobbit whom we all admire with his long wooden pipe, fuzzy woolly toes. <laughs> I love not to see wretchedness so charged and duty in a service perishing. Oh, my gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. A kinder we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake. And what poor service cannot do, noble respect takes it in might, not merit. For I am come great clerks of purpose to greet me with premeditated welcomes, where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practiced accent in their fears, and in conclusion, dumbly have broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet, out of this silence, yet I pick the welcome. And from the modesty of fearful duty, read as much as from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love, therefore, and tongue-tied simplicity, in least speak most to my capacity. I pray your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. If we should offend, it is with our good will that we come not to offend, but with our good will. We come but to show our simple skill that is the beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite, but with good will. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you are at like, like to know all that they do know. This fellow doth not stand upon points. <laughs> he has read his, read his prologue like a rough colt. He knows not the stop. <laughs> a good moral, my lady. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Indeed. He hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. <laughs> Who is next? <clears throat> if perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man with lime and rough cap does present wall. That vile wall that did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink they are content to whisper. This man with lantern and bush of thorn doth presenteth moonshine. For twas by moonshine that these lovers met at Nidus's tomb, and there are there to woe the grisly beast Lion Height by name did come <laughs> Lion Height by name, and trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, to get a feared or rather did a fright, and left her mantle, and she did fall. Anon came Pyramus, good youth and tall, found busy bee's mantle slain. And, and there, whereat with bloody blameful blade, he boldly broached his bloody blameful breast. And this bee, bee in mulberry shade, he drew his dagger and died. And there, and let all the rest, let moonshine, wall, and lion, and lovers twain, and here you see I will see our show, and two remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord, one lion may, but many asses do. <laughs> In this same interlude it doth befall that I, one snap by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think had in it a crannied hole or a chink through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast and stone doth show that I am the same wall, the truth is so. And this cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? Tis the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Pyramus approaches the wall. Silence. Oh, grim and looking knight. Oh, knight, with hues so black. O oh, night, whichever art when day is not. O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, alack, alack. I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. Thou wall, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet and lovely wall, show me thine chink to blink through with mine eyne. Thanks, courteous wall. Jove shield thee well for this. <laughs> but what see I? No, Thisbe, do I see, O oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. 
Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me! <laughs> the one thinks being sensible should curse again. <laughs> Nay, in truth, sir, he should not. Deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is the intern now, and I am to spy her through the chink of the wall. It will fall pat as I told you. Yonder she comes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wall. <laughs> oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans. I have often kissed thy stones, thy stones knit up with lime and hair. I see a voice! Now will I to the wall, and I can spy my This Thisbe's face, and hear her face. Thisbe! My love art thou? My love, I think? Think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace, and like Lamander, am I trusty still. And like Helen, till the fates did me kill. Not Shafalus to Procris was so true. I Shafalus to Procris, as I to you. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kiss the wall, but not your lips at all. Wilt thou at Nini's tomb meet me straightway? Tide life, tide death, yes. <laughs> and thus have I, wall, my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away doth go. Now is the mural down between the two neighbors. No remedy, my lady, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. <laughs> This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. The best of this kind are but shadows, and the worst are no worse if imagination amend them. Oh, it must be your imagination, then, and not theirs. If we imagine no less of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. <laughs> ah, here come two noble beasts in, a man and a lion. <laughs> you. Ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion wrath in widest rage doth roar. Then know that I, once snuck the joiner, am a lion fell. <laughs> no out, no lion stem. For if I should as lion come into this place, to a pity on my life. Are there a noble beast of good conscience? <laughs> the very best at a beast, my sweet, that e'er I saw. The lion is a very fox for his valor. True. And a goose for his discretion. <laughs> Not so, my lord, for his valor cannot carry his discretion, and the fox carries the goose. Well, his discretion, I am certain, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. Uh, it is well. Leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. <coughs> this lantern does the horned moon present. Oh, he should have worn the horns on his head. He has no crescent, and the horns are invisible within the circumference. This lantern does the horned moon present. Myself, the man, in the moon do seem to be. Oh, this is the, great error, the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How else is he the man in the moon? Oh, I am weary of this moon, but he would change. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is to tell you that the lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon. This thorn bush, my thorn bush. <laughs> and this dog, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, then this should all be put into the lantern, for they are all in the moon. But hark, here comes this beat. 